Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope that you are doing fantastic. I know that I'm doing fantastic. It is a really good week this week. One, tomorrow is Aaron and I's two year anniversary. And two, tomorrow is also my one year anniversary on BookTube. I have spent a whole entire year on BookTube and I have loved every, every single second of it. It has been absolutely amazing. The friends that I have made, the connections I've made, just all of it in general. And so I just, oh, this week is a fantastic week. I know I say fantastic a lot, but that's what it is, guys. It's fantastic. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I love you all so, so much. So um, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So today's video is the books that are releasing for Cozy Mysteries in the month of June. And let's get started. The first book that I am really excited about is called Better Off Red. It is a bookmobile series. It's book one by Nora Page and it's already out. I am super excited about this one because you guys know how I feel about pets and books and mobile books that can, you know, drive with all of the books, guys, all of the books. I'm so excited. So this book is all about Cleo Watkins and she is a librarian in a very, very small town called Catalpa Springs, Georgia. And she loves her job. She loves everything about the small town except for the young and somewhat um, douchebaggery of a mayor. A storm actually came in and destroyed a lot of the library. And so she is trying to sort of get funds and everything to rebuild the library. The mayor doesn't think that since their town is so small that they actually need a library. And so she goes to this eccentric donor, someone who is known for his wild DIYs, but she before she really gets to ask him to help with the library, he asks to borrow and check out all of the books based on how to get away with murder. Should she be scared? Should she be worried? Um, she realizes that she should be both when she finds his body bludgeoned to death and that her best friend, Mary Rose Garland, is the lead suspect. Well, Cleo says this isn't right. This is not how it's supposed to go. Her best friend didn't do this. Somebody else did. And so in order to figure out how to save the library, she also has to figure out the murder of the eccentric man. And she has a whole bunch of help with friends and maybe a quasi boyfriend as well. And this, this series looks super, super cute. I am going to be downloading it on my Kindle. Just you wait. The second book that I am super excited about is Murder Made to Order, a Lena Gregory book. This is the second in the All Day Breakfast Cafe Mystery series and it releases on June 19th. I'm super excited for this because I read the first one. It was one of the arcs that I received through NetGalley and I, I thought that it was a really, really fun, um, cozy mystery. It's all about Gia. She's moved from New York in sort of her um, douchebag of an ex-husband who is killed in the first book. And so this is sort of taking on what's happening next in Gia's life. And she is getting used to her, her new life in Florida with her best friend and her dog. And she's, she's super excited. Um, except it seems like there is a zoning regulation that means that the cafe was accidentally opened illegally, apparently. And it's, um, there is a council president, Marcia Steers, refuses to budge. Before Gia starts considering that she's gonna hang up her apron and do something else with her life, she discovers something shocking in the local swamp. Marcia steers dead in the water and she looks to be like the prime suspect. Poor Gia, she just doesn't get a break. And so I'm, I'm super, I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going on with Gia and her world. I really loved the best friend relationship. Um, 
I just, I, I, I'm really excited that this is the second book that's coming out. It's gonna be so good. The third book that I have is Murder at the Mansion by Sheila Connolly. And this is the first book in the series and it comes out June 26th. So this book is, it sounds really, really good. It's all about Kate. She has decided that she has a goal that once she was done with high school, she was going to move out of her small town, Ashland, Maryland. And 15 years later, she's done exactly that. She has a degree in hospitality management and a great job at a high end um, little boutique that is um, a hotel in Baltimore, Maryland. However, it seems like the owners of this little boutique have decided that they're going to sell to a big chain corporation. And Kate is unfortunately laid off. Now, it seems kind of strange and mysterious, but her best friend from her hometown has called and said that they um, are having a huge council meeting and that they want Kate to come. Well, it sort of realizes that it's sort of a, a trick, if you will, when the council lets Kate know that her small town is on the verge of bankruptcy and they believe that she is the town's last hope. They have taken all of their money together and bought this beautiful rundown mansion outside of the town, hoping that when people come and visit the Civil War um, places and museums outside of Ashford, that they will come and stay at this mansion. She really doesn't want to do this, but when she realizes that the only other option the town has is from Cordelia Walker, her nemesis from high school, she decides that she's going to try her best and make the best out of, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make some lemonade or you go get a latte. Lattes are good. Um, but she decides that, you know, she's going to try and help her small town out. She, as she is doing a walkthrough of the mansion, she stumbles upon a dead body and you guessed it, it is Cordelia's body. So not only is Kate sort of trying to figure out how to make everything better within her small town, she's also now on the um, suspect list and she has to decide what she's going to do with her life and she is going to try and figure out who did it so she can clear her name and help her town overcome its bankruptcy issues. The fourth book that I'm going to talk about is Claws of Death. Look at the little kitties. They're so cute, the little kitties. This is by Linda Riley. It is book two in a Cat Lady mystery series and it comes out on June 26th. So this is set in a small town, Whisker Jog, New Hampshire. It's a long ways from Hollywood, but you know, sometimes the retires, er, but sometimes the retirees of Hollywood need, need a small, nice place to live. And that's exactly what Deanna Daltrey wants to do. She wants to come and live out the rest of her life in Whisker Jog, New Hampshire. And she doesn't want to do this alone, so she asks Laura to, Laura Caphart, so she asks Laura Caphart, who owns the High Cliff Shelter for Cats, and she adopts two precious little kittens that are on the cover of this book. Oh my God. And she wants to, you know, make sure that she's not alone and she has some really good cuddling company. You know, those cozy companions that we were talking about last week. Yep, that's what we're talking about. It seems like Whisker Jog, New Hampshire is not a new place to Deanna. She has been there when she was younger, causing quite a ruckus with pussyfooting around and sort of meddling in these small town people's lives. And it seems like a whole bunch of people are trying to sort of use this against her, spreading rumors and different things like that. Not only is she having to fight uh, the rumors and living in a new town and all that comes with that, but she is finding herself a prime suspect of a murder of a teacher who is found dead on her property. And Laura and her aunt Fran are bound and determined to prove Deanna's innocence. And it looks, it looks super cute. I mean, and who, who doesn't love cat ladies? I mean, I'm kind of like a cat dog lady, cat dog cat dog. Let me know if you know what that's from. It's, okay, I'm showing my age. So, um, cause I've got two cats and two dogs. So I'm, I'm kind of like a both. I'm, I'm, I'm like an animal lady. I guess you could say an animal lady. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. So I'm super excited about this. Again, it comes out June 26th. 
And last but certainly not least, my most anticipated read of the month of June is Till Death Do Us Tart by Ellie Alexander. I know, I know, this is the eighth in the series and normally I do the first three books in a series for my cozy mystery releases, but one, I couldn't find another one that actually sounded really good. And then two, come on guys, you know my love for Ellie Alexander and the Big Shot Mystery series and everything. And this is like the culmination of all of the ones that I have been like wanting to like, ugh, it's all about a marriage and marriage of two of my favorite freaking uh, characters. I'm so excited about this. Jewel Capshaw seems to have too much on her plate. Like she always does. She always goes over and beyond. Um, she's trying to figure out, you know, who is she in love with? Is she still in love with her ex-husband, Carlos? Is she going to, what's going to happen with that? And she's trying to um, set up a surprise for her mom and her soon to be stepdad. Um, it's going to be Elizabethan themed, which how cool is that? And it seems like um, there's a party crasher um, takes someone out with a serving of poisoned wine and Jules discovers the deadly cup was intended for her. So it seems like someone's wanting to do away with Jules, which I'll fight them, I'll fisticuffs them, don't you touch my Jules. You know, yeah. So I'm super, super excited about this. I mean, and come on guys, till death do us tart. How freaking awesome of a title is that? <laughs> like to death do us tart, but it's to death do us tart. It's awesome, okay? Yes, judgy free, guys, judgy free. So, all right, now that I have, you know, done an, an equal amount of freaking out and everything, um, that's the end of this chapter of Court Tagonist. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.